In the first presentation, we calculated the deformation and stress for this small corner support component. When we looked at stress, we determined that the mesh is still too coarse, and we now want to increase the accuracy of this mesh. There are two ways of carrying out this process in ANSYS, one automatic, the other manual. We're now looking at the automatic method. In order to determine which aspects are of interest to us, we select the corresponding surface and generate an equivalent localized view of the results for these surfaces. We select the particular result we are looking for, stress for instance, that yellow strip of lightning just means we need to update, and all we've done is to initially display the results on this part of the component. And then we can assign the degree of accuracy required for this localized result by defining convergence. The standard setting for this convergence is 20%, but we would generally select a value of between 1 and 5% and then restart the calculation. So we'll use this adjustment to stipulate the maximum number of loops the program should perform in refining the results in one go. Stipulating five refinements means if necessary the calculation would be performed up to five times. If it finishes before then it automatically stops at that point. As soon as I press solve, the selected area of the mesh is automatically refined at the exact points where it is needed, and refined as many times as necessary for a valid result, i.e. until this limit of convergence has been reached, by which we mean until the result alters less than the predetermined value of 5%. In this case, it takes three cycles of refinement to reach this state. It lasts a few moments. And then we obtain a converged solution, marked here with a green tick. And when we look at the result, we see the stress increases from 201 to 258, and then 270 megapascals. The final adjustment was less than 5%, meaning convergence has now been reached. So the precision of the calculation now matches the value that we specified. And looking at the graduated stresses, we can see that this is now smoother than before. When we compare the values that have been averaged with those that have not, they are now clearly closer than they were, so now 270 compared to 287. If you then wished to further reduce the limit of convergence, you could increase the precision by reducing this differential. When we look at the underlying mesh, we see that in the area where stress is particularly high, the mesh has been correspondingly refined, without manual intervention on my part. It's been automatically refined using the algorithm of this adaptive mesh refinement. How does the alternative procedure look when we use a manually created mesh? We go to the tree directory and select Mesh, and then we see what the automated system created at the start and we can then select the surfaces on which we wish to carry out the process of refinement. So this is what we will now do on this surface. We select one or several surfaces with the control key, in this case just one, and via the sizing mesh control we can set the size of a local element in terms of millimetres. So for example let's say 10 millimetres. We then see a 10 millimetre circle displayed in the graphics window, which is actually too approximate so we would always go down to a smaller value of, say, 1 mm. From a purely visual perspective, we would all recognise that 1 mm would seem better suited to a local element. We can now check the mesh by generating it, selecting Generate Mesh via the right mouse button. Besides performing a purely visual evaluation, we can also look at the mesh in terms of its quality via the Mesh Matrix option. We can select the particular areas where the elements are perhaps not so good in terms of quality. You can see we are not now dealing with the areas in the middle where raw stresses are found. Consequently, element quality within the area under scrutiny is not inadvertently subjected to a negative influence to any great extent. We can go here to calculate the stresses on this mesh. Once this has been done, we can check what the stresses look like. So we now have a stress value of 278 megapascals. We'll now look at the course taken by the stress, with the mesh removed. It is now similarly smooth and similarly smoothed out as we saw earlier. Not visually smoothed out, but smoothed out due to the introduction of a fine limitation, on the strength of a fine mesh. What we could see there is now also very clear here. 
When we compare the stresses that have been averaged out with those that have not, we again see they are closer to each other, and we have thereby fulfilled the criterion of achieving a good mesh.